Now we're going to move on to, um, we move to receive the delegation, that's done, so we're going to go on to item 6.2. I'm going to call down Ettore Cardinelli. Cardinelli, sorry, Cardinelli, my apologies, I'm Italian too, I should know better. Matthew Thornton, sorry. Um, we approved all the delegations. Um, is it okay. appropriate at this time to ask that the motion 9.1 come up right after the delegation so we can deal with it all at once? We can do that. We'll, I'm sure that we'll address that at that time. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll leave it up to the mover of the motion. So, so we're having the group come up and uh, Donna Bacher on the um, information on the municipal land transfer tax motion that's on our agenda later in the meeting. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for uh, allowing us here. Okay, we're just waiting for queue up. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Donna Bacher. I'm the president of the Realtors Association of Hamilton Burlington and I'm also a broker with Royal Page State Realty here in Hamilton. I'm joined today by a Tory, <coughs> excuse me, Cardarelli, the Government Relations uh, Committee Chair from the Ontario Real Estate Association, Matthew Thornton, the Director of Government Relations for ARIA, Ontario Real Estate Association, as long as uh, I got a gallery there containing realtors from across our city who are here to urge this committee today to say no to the motion to study a municipal land transfer tax. There's two reasons why local realtors are opposed to the MLTT. First, the MLTT will make home ownership less affordable by forcing buyers to pay thousands of dollars in taxes when they decide to move to our city or within our city. In fact, the MLTT would add approximately $3,200 to the average priced Hamilton home. Altogether, local home buyers would pay $6,900 in land transfer taxes to the province and the city. This is money that's paid up front and it can't be rolled into a mortgage, isn't considered part of the down payment, and isn't considered in the value of the home. The MLTT is a tax that Hamilton homeowners can't afford to pay. And as this committee knows, Hamilton homeowners pay 9% higher property taxes than similar municipalities. In addition, Hamilton property taxes are based on a percentage of income, uh, or when a percentage of income, they're also high when compared to similar cities. You don't really have to take our word for it. Uh, last year, a study conducted by Ipsos Reed showed that 73% of Hamilton residents said the MLTT would limit their ability to afford a home within our city. In summary, Hamilton homeowners pay enough taxes and shouldn't be forced to pay another tax just because they own or want to own a home in Hamilton. Secondly, the MLTT is fundamentally unfair. Each year, there's a percentage of Hamilton homeowners who will move for different reasons. A young family with a baby on the way, someone who's lost their job, or heaven forbid, a family breakup. It's unfair and wrong to expect these people to shoulder an even greater tax burden for no additional services supplied to them. Atori will now speak to the impact of what the MLTT has had in Toronto. Atori. Thank you, Donna. Um, by way of reference, I just wanted to indicate that I am a uh, previous uh, and recent Hamilton homeowner and former taxpayer, and my daughter did attend uh, McMaster University. Despite perceptions in the media, the MLTT has had a significant impact in Toronto. In short, the tax is hurting the affordability of housing as well as the local economy. In Toronto, the MLTT is an incentive to either stay put or move to a jurisdiction without the tax, such as Hamilton. As a result, housing demand has remained high, but the supply of homes is low. This is leading to bidding wars that are driving up prices and hurting affordability. In 2012, the CD Howe Institute released a study which found that the MLTT in Toronto has caused a 16% annual reduction in resale home transactions since it was introduced. <clears throat> 
These lost sales, supported by good paying local jobs in the finance, manufacturing, and renovation sectors. So while Hamilton may generate additional revenue tax from an MLTT, it is the livelihood of your residents that will ultimately pay the price. But beyond the impact on the economy, consider what the tax means for Hamilton as a destination to live, work, and raise a family. At present, housing in Hamilton is relatively affordable. This is Hamilton's competitive edge, an edge that the city stands to lose with the introduction of an MLTT. In fact, 92% of Hamilton families said they would consider buying a home outside of the city if an MLTT was introduced here. Families will instead look at communities such as Burlington, Kitchener, Brantford, or Niagara. Cities with the same access to good transportation, but not to land transfer taxes. In closing, realtors urge this committee to say yes to affordable home ownership, yes to a strong city and local economy, and yes to local jobs for local residents by voting no to the motion to study an additional municipal land transfer tax for Hamilton. Thank you very much. We'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Tori. That's it on the presentations then. For all, thank you. So, questions of committee. I have Councillor Chad Collins first. And was that Councillor Aiden Johnson? Yes, Councillor Collins. Thanks, uh, Madam Chairman. And through you to the delegation, I think they've touched on most of the points that uh, I was going to raise in terms of the, um, the mortgage issues and certainly the uh, competitive issues that um, we find ourselves in. But I do have one question in terms of the um, what's happened in Toronto and, and Madam Chairman, I think all of us have experienced an influx of Torontonians or GTA residents who have now moved to Hamilton. Many of them are cashing out in some cases with some very um, expensive uh, properties, moving to Hamilton for better accommodations, they have money in the bank, and uh, they're making a new start in our city, and we welcome that. Uh, conversely, there's others, and I think it was referenced in both presentations, who just can't afford to even get in the market in Toronto and they're moving here for greener pastures for different reasons, but again, we welcome that uh, influx as well. Uh, in, in terms of the, um, um, the competitive advantage that Hamilton has, as I understand it, Toronto is still the only uh, municipality within Ontario that has the land transfer tax, is that correct? correct. And in terms of um, those people who are leaving the city, do we have any idea in terms of those people who um, should be looking in Toronto, they are they're born and raised in the GTA and are now looking not just at Hamilton but other areas. So this tax, I'm assuming, that was implemented in Toronto under Mayor Miller, as I understand it, um, it's forced people to other municipalities. Is that a, in combination with some other issues? That is, that is correct. Remember, you're referring to just the city of Toronto. In fact, some of them have moved out to the greater GTA area. I don't know the stats, Matt. Do you have any no, information no, on that? No, no hard stats around um, who and um, is moving by and how many, but we do know certainly that uh, the tax is driving transactions out to the 905 and to Hamilton and other municipalities that aren't charging second entry. Mississauga, I thought at one point in time, I don't know if it was now or past in the past, did Mississauga entertaining the same transfer tax, or was there another GTA municipality that considered? implementing it as well? They're not officially right now. It was uh, not an issue in the uh, last election, but in fact I personally have a meeting with one of the Mississauga councillors this afternoon. So. Okay. And in terms of, um, you know, our local real estate association has been terrific in terms of keeping us, I think we all get the monthly updates in terms of where we currently sit, and Hamilton continues to be not just in Ontario, but I think even across the country one of the hottest real estate markets, despite the fact that, you know, there's talk about we're officially in a recession. Um, you know, there's certainly other issues related to uh, it being a seller's market right now. But Hamilton, just to be clear, can I get, get confirmation that we're still one of the hottest places to, uh, from a real estate perspective, to make an investment, whether it's residential or even other property classifications? 
No, through you, um, Mr. Chair, yes, Hamilton, uh, we are still really realizing a, a nice boom market. It's a seller's market. Uh, the issue with the municipal land transfer tax, the fear, is, is that that will take the much needed wind out of the sales of the Hamilton market, Hamilton residential market. So, uh, and there'll be that leapfrog over to municipalities that, that don't have it. Great, thanks for that. Those are the only questions I have at this point. Thank you. Councillor Aiden Johnson. Thank you very much. Uh, to clarify, uh, I, I think you know this, but just in case it's not perfectly clear for everyone who's present, uh, the motion I proposed is not to introduce a land transfer tax, it is to study the question. And uh, through you, uh, Madam Chair, and yes, we are aware of that. And uh, to Councillor Johnson, the the studies, the Alta study that uh, really reflected on the Toronto market, indicated to us uh, the the severe negative uh, implications of this tax. Uh, we I believe that we're moving quite quickly on this because we do not want that wind sucked out of Hamilton uh, out, out of our sales. Okay, our, the residents of the city of Hamilton, this has been long overdue. And uh, for us to be realizing this type of market for our residents to be finally, you know, on the map in, in real estate land, to have that taken away from them is just so unjust. So that's our big fear is, is that our, our desire is that, that, that this does not proceed any further that uh, this just gets put someplace else and because the word of this once it gets out that's our fear is it your argument that without the land transfer tax house prices in toronto would not be uh skyrocketing the way that they are uh, i'm going to pass this i'm going to pass this on to either one of these two that have information on the altus study it's, um, it, the evidence shows that the supply would be higher, so naturally that would I tend mean, to... Oh, sorry, I, please complete your, your thought. I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, so the, the, with the supply being higher, it's very possible that the, in price, the price would be impacted in that particular way. Yeah, the tax is really a uh, barrier to uh, selling your home and moving within the GTA. If you, as a seller, if you know that you have to pay a second land transfer tax on the other end of the deal, uh, you're less likely to list. The lack of listings is really driving a lot of the bidding wars we're seeing in Toronto, and that's really uh, contributing to the uh, skyrocketing, uh, skyrocketing prices that uh, uh, are really characteristic of the city right now. Would you agree that there are other significant factors that cause house prices in Toronto to be very high? Of course, there's 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 a number of reasons. Um, I think you know a number of factors are contributing to the Toronto's market. Um, immigration, as an example, investment, as another example. But those are two things, by the way, that I don't think Hamilton benefits from uh, as much as uh, Toronto does. So um, I think that's a really strong argument why Hamilton shouldn't uh, really certainly not pursue the tax, but even to study it. I think, as Donna mentioned, sends a a bad message to the market overall. Sends a bad message to um, potential home buyers who are looking at Hamilton as a, as a possible destination, uh, that uh, this, this market could potentially become less affordable in the future. What are these other factors in Toronto that Hamilton doesn't have? Sorry, I, I just referenced them. Um, uh, immigration, obviously Toronto is a hub for immigration. Uh, new Canadians, uh, I think by and large, are settling in uh, Toronto or, or, or certainly large numbers of them and foreign investment. I mean the the condo towers are going up around Toronto. A lot of them are being purchased by um, investors. So. Um, sorry, um, I, perhaps I misheard. Did you just say that Hamilton doesn't have as significant factors in its urban dynamic, uh, new Canadians, condo development and, and no, investment? No, I, I, I think the point I'm trying to make is that Toronto benefits uh, from those two factors probably a little bit more than Hamilton does. Got it. So here's a little story and maybe you can give me some advice as realtors. Um, I can't afford a house in this city right now, my husband and I with our incomes put together. However, we are saving and I haven't made up my mind yet as a person who is actively in the house market looking to buy whether the land transfer tax that I'm investigating um, is going to sort of 
keep me from buying a house for a couple of years if hypothetically it's ever introduced or whether it would just be another one of the expenses that a new home buyer just has to deal with. Uh, what sort of advice would you give me as I contemplate that? It's a messy question, but that's, that's where I'm at personally and psychologically to admit my own bias. Uh, it's uh, through the chair to, count, to Councillor Johnson. The land transfer tax is a is an amount which is added on to the legal to the closing costs when the deal closes. So, for example, if you were purchasing a two hundred thousand dollar property and you were putting five percent down, you'd be required to show ten thousand dollars. Okay, that's what you would need to put down on that property, leaving you with a hundred and ninety thousand dollar mortgage. With the land transfer tax right now, it's a graded scale, and you roughly pay that 1% minus 275, which would amount to like 1775 or thereabouts, okay? That would be your land transfer tax, $1,750 on top of your legal fees to close that deal. On the in two hundred thousand dollars, that's extremely cheap now in the city of Hamilton. Okay, so you're getting right in at the bottom. With this additional land transfer tax, it would mean that homeowners would have to come up with not only that $10,000, the legal fees to close the deal, but twice as much in that tax that they would have to give the lawyer on day of closing. So could it delay purchases by a year or two? I would say definitely yes, There's th that possibility is there. And is six or $7,000 significant to the average home buyer when you consider that you only need 5% to put down 10,000? Yes, it is significant. So that additional, that additional cost is huge and uh, it takes people a long time to save up that amount of money. Yes. <laughs> um, so here's more anecdotal and biographical information. I, I, I'm sure you see how it's relevant. Thank you for your indulgence with this, Madam Chair. Uh, my husband and I, as we look down the road, we're, like, we're already thinking if and when we buy a house, it won't be in Hamilton because we can't afford the houses here. Part of me thinks that we are already well down the road to a Toronto-like situation in Hamilton in terms of real estate. And in the meantime, as a municipality, we're not reaping the benefits. We, as a municipality, are woefully short on income. The taxpayers and homeowners in my ward, which is West Hamilton, Ward 1, pay the highest property taxes in the whole of the municipality. Some of them have plans for moving out. Some of them would just want to stay put. Particularly, obviously, from the perspective of those who just want to stay put in their house that they scrimped and saved for and finally own, they just want to avoid any further increase to their property tax. So my, just to explain my interest in land transfer taxation, I am looking for ways to reassure Ward 1ers that there are realistic ways to prevent their property taxes from going up further. Those who intend to stay put, particularly. Um, so I, I just wanted to put that out there. This isn't uh, any attempt to wreck your business or make things hard for you as business people. Rather, I, my, my interest is in finding economically responsible ways to balance our city budget. Um, and I'm looking forward to this conversation and I thank you for all the food for thought that you've provided today. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions from committee? Seeing none, can I motion to receive the presentations? Moved by Councillor Collins, second by Councillor Arlene Vanderbeek. All in favor? Thank you, everyone, and everyone in the audience. And uh, it just takes us right into segue. Councillor Aiden Johnson on motion 9 1. Did you want to put that on the floor at this time? Councillor Pearson. Oh, um, we actually have one additional delegation related to that. Oh, it's I'm 6. sorry, 3. my apologies. Please. Um, oh, Mr. Roshko. Correct? I'm sorry. Please come down, Mr. Roshko. I thought they were all going to be together. Good morning, everyone. Thank you uh, for having the Hamilton Halton Home Builders uh, uh, present this delegation today. Uh, our friends from Aurea certainly have said a lot of uh, 
fascinating things and given you some some wonderful uh, statistics on on what uh, should be happening. I'll continue and, and provide you with uh, with my. Uh, Delegation anyway, which uh, I think you'll find uh, mr. Roshko. Can I just ask that you speak into the microphone Denis? I don't know if you can put the volume up a little bit. It's been challenging to hear today. Okay, we'll do. Thank you So my name is Alan Roshko and I'm the president of the Hamilton Halton Home Builders Association We're the voice of the residential construction and renovation industries and advocate for affordability and home ownership Today I'd like to <clears throat> to address the issue of municipal land transfer taxes uh, being considered by this committee that directly affects one of our two key mandates, the affordability of home ownership. So in today's world, there are so many pressures on homeowners, whether they're to be first-time buyers, the move-up buyer, etc. In Hamilton, we've seen the price of real estate soar, even while maintaining relative affordability compared to our GTA neighbors. People who live here wonder how their children will be able to afford a new home. Many feel they can't purchase a new home because it is just too costly an endeavor. In order to achieve the growth, sorry, uh, in order to achieve the growth targets set by the province, which our city has not yet been able to achieve, we need to be able to attract more people to our city. Adding a new tax, a municipal land transfer tax, is counterintuitive to this goal. Our association hosted a mayoral candidate. Uh, event which went on, uh, which sorry our association hosted a mayoral debate prior to last year's falls elections and every mayor candidate went on record saying they were opposed to implementing such a tax this is because it's just bad for business Maria had indicated that a land a land tax imposed by the municipality would add approximately thirty two hundred dollars to the price of a home as a percentage of the total house price that is staggering and significant and this would be charged to people who, if they choose Hamilton as their home, will already pay more for property taxes than the comparable average of our surrounding neighbors. So why would we add an additional burden on these people, making our city less desirable than our neighbors and potentially losing that new resident to them? It is totally reasonable for the city to search out new revenue tools or to find ways to keep property taxes down. But those tools should be fair and reasonable and not burden a small portion, a small portion of the population who choose either to relocate to Hamilton, move into home ownership, downsize due to the age, and etc., who benefit no more of the services in Hamilton than their neighbors who don't need to move. Please continue down the road to good fiscal management, continuing to reduce property tax differential between ourselves and other comparable municipalities as has been done over the last several years we truly believe that a municipal land transfer tax is not the right choice for hamilton neither as a principle when trying to grow our city nor as a revenue tool for city management we ask that this committee and council back the position taken previously by the mayor and not proceed further in considering municipal and tra uh, land transfer taxes as an option for Hamilton. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Questions of the presenter, anyone? Seeing none, can I have a motion to receive? Moved by Councillor Collins, second by Councillor Brenda Johnson. All in favor. Thank you, Mr. Rushko. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now we will move on to Councillor Aidan Johnson to address your motion. Uh, I read the motion out last time, Madam Chair. Would it be good or necessary for me to read it out again, or are we not? I don't believe we. Yeah, good. So I move to. my motion. And it's seconded by? Anybody. Can I find a seconder? I'll second. Thanks. Okay, and I have a speaker's list, Councillor Collins. Well, Madam Chairman, I. I'm not going to belabor the points that were made earlier. For me, uh, I see it as a competitive advantage that Toronto has this tax in place and we don't. And um, and I think there's a reason why a lot of other municipalities haven't followed suit. And it, it's much like the GST issue, right? Once it's implemented, it's not going anywhere. I understand former Mayor Ford was arguing that they were going to get rid of it, they were going to reduce it. And I don't believe Toronto's budged an inch in terms of lowering associated with the the land tax and I don't foresee at any point in time in the future because of the money that's involved um, Toronto moving on that issue and, and that's good for Hamilton and I as I I think was clearly stated in both presentations um, 
you know, people are moving out of Toronto because it's so costly to live there. And we're certainly nowhere near where they're at. And I welcome those people who are moving from Toronto, who have money in their pockets, who are buying homes and fixing them up in all parts of the city. It's not just a lower city issue. It's not just a West Harbour area issue. I'd say that half of the people who are moving into my, my area either purchasing new homes or existing uh, infra um, housing stock, half of them are from either Toronto or somewhere uh, around the GTA area. And they're moving here because they can't afford it. I, I just don't believe that you know, putting a barrier like this in place helps us. I'd much rather um, encourage people or, or foster an environment that helps people, like Councillor Johnson, buy their first home, that helps people um, who, when they purchase their first home, they have money to purchase appliances and furniture and all the things that come with home ownership, maybe even undertake some renovations. And I think it's important to have that money circulating in the economy. And in some cases, people may just want to keep that money in their pocket and invest it. And so for me, you know, I heard loud and clear, as was referenced here earlier today, that the city needs to address its competitive tax situation. The 9% that Donna referenced, uh, that number isn't going away anytime soon, unfortunately. And I believe that in implementing a new tax such as this or others, I mean, Toronto had other taxes that they had with their, their, their vehicle uh, license plates and, and other issues that they've since, I believe, uh, they've done away with. Um, I think we need to keep the ball rolling. We've seen some very good things happen in this municipality. We haven't seen a real estate market like this in decades, certainly probably since before I was born. And, um, and I'm interested in keeping that going. I'm not interested in interrupting the, um, the momentum that we have here in the municipality. It's, we've seen cranes in the downtown for the first time in decades, and multiple cranes, not just on one site. And, but I, I have to say, having said all of that, and I certainly can't support the initiative, I, I can't certainly fault Councillor Johnson for looking at ways to try to solve some of the financial issues that we have. We haven't received, by and large, um, like Toronto, we haven't received assistance from the provincial and federal governments. They have their favourites. Um, that's not to suggest that we just sit on our hands and, and lament about that fact. Um, but we have our work cut out for us, and I think that implementing something like this um, does more harm than good. So um, I, I won't be supporting it, and um, those are my comments. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Vanderbeek. Madam Chair, uh, I would like to say that I support everything that Councillor Collins has said. Uh, we um, have quite a challenge for new ownership in this city just based on the cost of buying a new home. Uh, now and I think that we need to be encouraging that we we say we want to be the best place to live work and play and live is the first thing on the list so I think that we need to be doing things to make that more attainable not less uh, so I I too will not be supporting this motion although I do understand I do understand the intention of it I just can't be supportive of it thank you thank you and I'm going to relinquish it oh Councillor Aiden Johnson oh. do you wish to speak I'm sorry if I may or yeah whichever. go ahead thank you Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, in case it's not clear, I just wanted to state I too welcome Torontonians to the city. And if I thought that studying the possibility of land transfer taxation was going to create a significant stop to Toronto friends coming to Hamilton and buying here and being Hamiltonian, I would not propose this motion. It is my firm conviction that if we study land transfer taxation, that nothing is going to happen to the flow of Torontonians in, into Hamilton. I don't know whether or not a land transfer tax would have a significant impact on Torontonians and others coming to Hamilton. I just don't know. I can see a scenario in which a land transfer tax would discourage uh, some Torontonians, even maybe a significant number of Torontonians from coming to Hamilton and investing in our economy by being here and adding to our culture by being here. I can also imagine a future in which some reasonable, not excessively high land transfer tax is implemented and lo and behold, Torontonians with their juicy wallets and purses and bank accounts continue to come into Hamilton and buy the beautiful, uh, continually affordable real estate that we have in the city. In Ward 1, we have benefited tremendously from this influx, and the house prices are booming. 
Ward 1ers are paying incredible amounts of property tax, more than in any other ward. And as ward councillor, I think it would be irresponsible of me to not look for ways to protect them as taxpayers. So that's the motivation uh, behind my request for a study, and I would urge my councillor colleagues to consider. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Johnston. I'm going to relinquish the chair to you, and I'd like to have, say, a few comments. Okay, sorry, so I'll relinquish to Councillor Brenda Johnson. Thank you. Um, I, I have to concur with uh, Councillor Collins said it very well, and uh, Councillor Vanderbeek adding on to it. I, I didn't support this when you put it on the floor at the last meeting as a, a notice, and uh, I, I certainly can't support it today. I believe that, uh, as Councillor Collins raised, you know, we have a tremendous... Um, boom going on right now. And it's not just um, houses that are being fixed up, that are being purchased, and they're not just all Toronto Torontonians purchasing. We have a good influx of that, but we also have our own citizens here who are trying to get into the housing market. Um, affordability is difficult, and I certainly commend them when they are able to jump in. I can tell you in Ward 10, as, as was raised, I mean, we've had two cranes in Ward 10. I'm absolutely thrilled. It's never been in my whole time in Stony Creek since 1984 that I've seen a crane in Ward 10. So, um, you know, this is this is great momentum. I'd hate to see it. Um, I hate to see that sort of blip created because that's what happens. It's it's a blip that happens, and I know the real estate market definitely can follow that and see see it occurring. And I'll tell you, I mean, with the houses that are being purchased, if you have to question the money that's going to be the 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 dollars of the revenue that can be generated. I see this happening right now in my own ward where I'm having little houses and large lots being torn down and I'm not going to say monster houses but very large homes in the seven, eight hundred thousand dollar range just in my own neighborhood. So you've got to imagine the impact of the tax revenue that's just coming off of that. So we are benefiting. We're not losing. We are benefiting from that going on. All of us. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think the fear here is this, it does create a slippery slope. You know, ha Toronto did it, and they're seeing the impact of it. And I don't think that we want to send that ripple of fear through, uh, through potential purchasers and residents in our own city that want to move out of their homes and maybe into something else that they're downsizing in and now having to pay additional, an additional tax as well. So for all those reasons, I too am not supportive of this. I th thank Councillor Aidan Johnson for bringing it forward. And, um, but I, I can't support it this time. I'm hoping that we can find out better ways or different ways of, uh, if we need to, of uh, generating additional taxes to the tax, not a tax, but something that we can do that is fair to all the taxpayers of the city. And I'll take the chair back. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Pasuda would like to speak, please. Uh, thank you. Good morning. Um, no, we don't have, everybody coming here is not coming from Toronto with lots of money. I can tell you in my ward, they're coming from Woodstock, they're coming from Kitchener, they're coming from St. Thomas, they make their way out here. Uh, some of them are selling their properties at, at not as great as the values we're getting around here. And they're coming here with uh, a minimum amount of dollars to buy property. And as Councillor Collins said, they, they maybe need new appliances, they need furniture. Uh, you buy a house even, even with home inspections. When you move in, you find issues. I can tell you we bought one uh, two years ago on the mountain for a daughter and uh, Week, the week after there was issues, and there continues to be issues. She didn't realize that there's these taxes are on there. So she mentioned the other day again, Dad is another tax, and we're looking at buying, we want another house, we're looking at getting a bigger home and get rid of some of the issues. And uh, she said, It's another tax, and we can't afford it. Her husband works in a, in a restaurant, and she's working in the medical field, but she's working her way up. At some point in time, she may be able to afford it, but not now. So in a new car, and we don't know where interest rates are going to be going. There's a whole lot of issues here we've got to deal with. And as I say, we're not getting, people are coming here, yes, with some money. Other people are coming here on a minimum amount of income, and they need to find a home and a place to raise their I, I, I understand the Councilor Johnson initiative and where he's going and, and the need to generate taxes, but this. I'm sorry, okay? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, everyone. So I'm going to call the question. All in favor? That be please be recorded. Thank you. And all opposed? Thank you, everyone. It was a valiant attempt. Thank you.